welcome friends in this session on transmission line protection series today in this session we will discuss about the distance protection schemes wherein we will basically discuss about the three most important distance protection schemes which are in used across various utilities and these schemes are direct underreaching schemes permissive underreaching transfer tripping schemes permissive overreaching transfer tripping schemes probably this will be our last session before we move on to the practical sessions and wherein we will discuss about the relay settings and configuration logic creation in various numerical distance protection relays we will basically focus ourselves on the three major numerical protection relays of various manufacturers especially siemens abb and ge we will discuss these configurations and relay settings using the open source software that is dixie pcm and mycom s1 agile after that in the practical session itself we will discuss about the dr analysis in details using the two software that is sigra and webwin but before that in this session we will cover in detail about these distance protection schemes some of the topics uh, like sotf stub def over voltage and auto reclosures these theoretical concepts we will discuss as and when required during our practical session however we will have a separate session uh, a separate theoretical session on power swing load encroachment and the distance protection challenges in the series compensated lines today in this session we will discuss in details about these three distance protection schemes and due to that this session might be somewhat longer as compared to the other two or three sessions which we have done earlier anyway we will provide you the time stamp in the description so that you can directly navigate to the different topics as per your requirement kindly note that this session is again prepared from the open source material and the reference used for this uh, session is basically the npag guide that is the network protection and automation guide and this npag is available free of cost in software for a uh, soft copy on google you can also purchase the hard copy from the publisher or basically the g factory but uh, soft copy is available on google and i have used the concepts uh, in this npag for creation of these pptts and now i will explain to you in details about direct underreaching schemes permissive underreaching transport tripping schemes permissive overreaching transport tripping schemes and in the end we will discuss about uh, the limitations of permissive underreaching schemes the limitations of permissive overreaching schemes then uh, the three important concepts inside the permissive overreaching transport tripping schemes like your cbe eco logic then next we can infeed logic wherein we will discuss about the we can infeed eco and we can infeed tripping and in the end we will discuss about the permissive overreaching schemes in the parallel lines where we will discuss about the current reversal guard and its uh, current reversal phenomena what its effect on the permissive overreaching schemes so without wasting further time let us start so this is our distance protection schemes now this the basic distance scheme i have already covered during our first session on the basics of distance protection schemes wherein i have already explained to you that the how the reach settings of zone 1 zone 2 zone 3 are calculated how the timings of zone 1 zone 2 zone 3 are calculated and coordinated with the upstream and downstream lines so now uh, we will discuss about the basic distance scheme first what are its limitations and then we will move to the channel dependent schemes so uh, on your screen in this ppt you will see two uh, basically three diagram one uh, is your this uh, basic distance scheme now this uh, diagram over here is uh, your reach uh, diagram where these zone 1 zone 2 zone 3 reach are depicted and 
now this uh, two diagram two logic diagram which, which is shown here basically designates how this uh, zone 1 zone 2 zone 3 will trip our breaker so if you see here this one designates the or gate so if there is a fault in zone 1 it will directly trip the breaker if a fault is in zone 2 it will wait up to the t2 time which may be either 350 or 500 milliseconds and if the fault is in zone 3 then it will operate after the elapse of the timer t3 which may be either 1 second or 1.5 second for 400 kv or 760 kv lines similarly uh, this is for the second terminal or this is for the right hand side bus if you see here this is left hand side uh, bus this logic is for left hand side this right hand side bus this logic is for the right hand side now suppose there is a fault at this point so if the fault is at this point then this fault falls in the zone 2 of a uh, left hand side bus while this is in the zone 1 of right hand side so our logic will work like this in the right hand side this is in zone 1 so this uh, zone 1 will operate instantaneously it, and it will trip the breaker however on the left hand side this fault is in zone 2 so it will not trip the breaker instantaneously but it will wait for the uh, time at t2 to lapse so the left hand side breaker will open only after the elapse of time at t2 and the fault will be uh, isolated only after the zone 2 time delay so uh, if you see uh, the major limitations of basic distance scheme is that First of all, there is a sequential fault clearance. Uh, the breakers at both ends are not opened simultaneously, but it is a sequential fault clearance whenever there is a fault in the end zones. Like if the fault is in uh, this 20% of this remote uh, end or the fault is in 20% of this local end, then it will be uh, sequential clearance. Further, since the fault is uh, sequentially cleared and at one end the fault is cleared after the zone 2 time delay, so the fault clearance time is longer and this longer fault clearance time creates lots of problem especially the stability problems and all uh, in the transmission lines and also uh, your more damage into the system now another problem with this basic scheme is that if you are using auto reclosure and we will discuss about the auto reclosure in a separate session then your dead time will reduce in a case of high speed auto reclosure because the fault uh, is not isolated until your zone 2 operated and because this zone 2 operation time is 350 to 500 milliseconds so now the dead time available for your breaker for auto high speed auto reclosure is very low so uh, these limitations in basic distance schemes are taken care by using some channel dependent schemes and we will discuss about those schemes in a couple of minutes further if you see here one of the major limitation is that the zone 1 of both end that is uh, zone 1 from the left hand side bus and zone 1 from the right hand side bus coincides only for 60 percent of the transmission lines because for this 20 percent on the left hand bus and 20 percent reach of the right hand bus uh, one end will see the fault in zone 2 and other end will see the fault in zone 1 only in the middle 60 percent portion both end will operate simultaneously or uh, in the 0 millisecond time delay or instantaneous time delay so uh, for remaining 40% that is 20% and on both ends your fault clearance will be delayed but remember this is our principal line this line uh, is the between these two buses left hand bus suppose the M bus and N bus and this is a principal line so our main objective is that we have to isolate the any faults of the principal line instantaneously but in this basic distance scheme the fault on the principal line itself is getting uh, delayed clearance so uh, now to avoid these kinds of problems we use channel dependent schemes and we will discuss about this in couple of minutes if you see here when the fault is on the uh, this uh, right hand side bus nearer to this right hand side bus in the left hand side the relay sees the fault in zone 2 and it will issue the trip command only after t2 time delay while the right hand side it is used uh, tripping command instantaneously so zone 1 is set for 80 percent and it leaves two end zones fault in end zone results in instantaneous tripping at one end and time delayed at other so time delay may lead to system stability problems that we have already discussed secondly the sequential clearance leaves no dead time for high speed auto reclosure cycles and this will lead to uh, transient faults being converted to permanent faults and we will discuss how these are getting converted the transient fault how transient fault becomes permanent how dead times gets reduced in high speed auto reclosure and what basically is high speed auto reclosure we will discuss everything in a separate session while we discuss about the auto reclosure schemes 
now the last limitation is that the longer clearance time uh, and these longer uh, longer clearance times leads to more damage in the system so the next comes the channel dependent schemes and inside the channel dependent schemes basically there are three uh, types of scheme that we will discuss in these sessions and uh, next two type of scheme that we will cover separately whenever required the three basic type of schemes which are more common and which are used across the various utilities are direct Tri uh, tripping schemes, direct transfer tripping schemes rather than the permissive underreaching transfer tripping schemes, permissive overreaching transfer tripping schemes. This we will discuss in this session and the two other scheme that is acceleration and blocking scheme that we will not discuss in this session but we will definitely cover this in some separate lecture. Now the first is direct transfer trip and as the name suggests in this case what is happening is that uh, the tripping is transferred directly from one end to other end and uh, if you look at a uh, little bit in deeper sense then what is uh, said is that the tripping is transferred directly that means which end will uh, transfer the tripping directly definitely the end which see the fault in zone 1 that has to transfer the tripping to the remote end so uh, now this uh, if you see here this is your now uh, in the last uh, basic schemes your left hand side logics and right hand side logics are not connected via any channels these are all these both are working uh, separately but now if in the channel dependent scheme if you see here this left hand side logic is exactly the same right hand side logic is also exactly the same but it is connected through this two plcc channels and now if you see here what is uh, this scheme says suppose it is exactly the same the fault is at uh, this is, uh, nearer to the remote end bus now this fault is in the zone 2 from the left hand side and the fault is in zone 1 from the right hand side so right hand side bus it says the fault in zone 1 the relay here operates in zone 1 and it is used the trip command instantaneously further when it sees the fault in zone 1 it will send a tripping signal or it will send a carrier signal to this uh, end which see the fault in zone 2 and once the carrier is received here this carrier is connected directly to your tripping logic now this is a very simple scheme once zone 1 at this end operates it will send a carrier signal once the carrier signal is received over here this carrier signal will uh, directly issue the trip command the scheme is very simple but the limitation is that suppose this carrier signal is generated due to any problem here or due to any error due to any manual error or due to some work that you, uh, is going on your PLCC generates a carrier and now once this carrier is received on this end it will directly issue the trip command it doesn't see whether your zone has picked up or not whether the fault is there or not it directly issues the trip command and that is the main limitations of direct transfer tripping schemes so uh, to summarize the advantages is that all faults anywhere along the protected line can be cleared instantaneously at both line ends uh, that we have already seen uh, suppose the fault is nearer to this end now uh, even if this fault is in zone 2 from the left hand side but this fault will be cleared instantaneously once the carrier is received the instantaneous here doesn't means your 0 millisecond but it is it definitely means uh, 2 to 3 cycles so your fault is cleared much uh, before your the actual zone 2 time of 350 or 500 millisecond that's why it is called instantaneous so any fault anywhere uh, in this principal line it will be cleared instantaneously and the breaker will be opened simultaneously at both ends second the scheme is very easy to implement and advantageous for protecting three terminal lines we will discuss about three terminal lines in a separate session the limitations are that a very secure signaling channel is required because incorrect operation leads to false tripping that we have already seen the carrier once received here if you see the carrier once received uh, over here it will directly issue the trip command so any incorrect receiving of the carrier signal will issue a trip command because it is not keyed to any zone pickup second thing circuit breakers at both line end must be closed because uh, if the circuit breaker is not closed suppose at this end then the zone will not pick up and if the zone one will not pick up then it cannot send the carrier and if the, uh, it cannot send the carrier over here then the, uh, this will not issue a trip command instantaneously but it will issue a trip command only after elapse of zone 2 timer so your circuit breaker at two line end must be closed and contribute fault current to obtain high speed fault clearance and the last limitation is that if your channel fails then only basic scheme logic will be provided so now 
to avoid these kinds of problems where uh, your carrier signal, uh, incorrect carrier signal is issuing tripping commands because it is not connected or it is not interlocked with any zone pickup. So we move on to some complex schemes and these schemes are basically called permissive schemes and if you see the permissive, permissive is basically a word which comes from permission and here permission means the overreaching zones will be given the permission to trip instantaneously and who will issue uh, this permission? The carrier from the remote end will give the permission to the local end overreaching zones to issue a tripping command instantaneously by bypassing its timer. So these permissive schemes, you can have two types of permissive schemes. One is permissive underreaching schemes and the second is permissive overreaching schemes. Basically permissive means permission to trip instantaneously to an overreaching zone and which overreaching zone? Definitely zone 2, not zone 3 because zone 3 has higher reach and it covers the remote and longest line. So if you give the permission to zone 3, then uh, un uh, necessarily you will be tripping your line for any faults on the adjacent transmission line also. Uh, then the second thing is that your permissive schemes can be of two types, permissive underreaching and permissive overreaching. In case of underreaching schemes, the permission is sent by the underreaching zones. And what is the underreaching zones? It is zone 1, if you remember from the first session. And in the case of permissive overreaching scheme, the permission is sent by the overreaching zones. And what is the overreaching zone? Overreaching zone here is zone 2. So in case of permissive underreaching schemes, zone 1 will send the carrier and your uh, tripping logic is that if the carrier once received if sees whether the zone 2 is in pickup condition or not if zone 2 is in pickup condition so it will issue the trip command in the case of permissive overreaching schemes your zone 2 pickup will send the carrier and once the carrier is received at your end if zone 2 is in pickup condition carrier is received it will issue the trip command instantaneously now we will see the operation of both permissive underreaching scheme and permissive overreaching scheme the first one is permissive underreaching scheme don't bother about this 0 by 100 and this end logic we will discuss it about it in couple of seconds first consider this fault which is closer to this right hand bus so now in uh, left hand side your relay will pick up in zone 2 while on the right hand side the relay will pick up in zone 1 once the relay will pick up in zone 1 because it is an under reaching scheme so your zone 1 will send the carrier signal look here your right hand side uh, its zone 1 picked up so it will issue trip commands and also it sends a carrier signal over here uh, forget about the 0 by 100 I will discuss about this in couple of minutes so once this carrier is received here if you remember in the last scheme this carrier was directly connected to tripping but here now if the carrier is received it sees whether your zone 2 is picked up or not so there is an end gate so once your zone 2 is picked up and carrier is received from remote end only then it will issue a trip command so even if your uh, carrier is generated incorrectly and this carrier is received over here it cannot issue a trip command because in case of incorrect carrier generation there will not be any zone to pick up at this end now this 0 by 100 is basically a 100 millisecond timer and why it is required suppose your uh, carrier is generated from this end and this carrier is received at your this end now if uh, suppose at this end zone 2 pickup is delayed suppose uh, zone 2 picks up but as uh, before zone 2 picks up your carrier which is received from remote end has expired so now if zone 2 picks up it sees that our carrier is not available so it cannot issue a trip command instantaneously but it has to wait for its t2 timer to lapse so this 0 by 100 is basically a delayed timer which is introduced inside your uh, send logic and this uh, is basically uh, in case of ABB settings if you see there is a T send minimum also in case of your Siemens is, uh, relay this is send, uh, T send prolongation and in AB, uh, Alstom also carrier minimum duration of carrier set signal these signals uh, these settings are available and you say uh, set it as 100 milliseconds so now if the carrier is received this carrier will be available here for 100 milliseconds and if your zone 2 picks up within this 100 milliseconds then it will issue a trip command instantaneously so now you see the advantages of this scheme is that it is very secure scheme because it will not issue a trip command directly on the basis of receipt of carrier but it will issue a trip command only after receipt of carrier and zone 2 pick up both. So the send logic is zone 1 will send the carrier and tripping logic is receiving of carrier plus zone 2 pick up then only the instantaneous tripping will happen. The scheme is very secure as signaling channel is keyed for internal fault. The limitation is that uh, this limitation is exactly the same which we have discussed in case of direct tripping schemes one the uh, if the line terminal is open 
one terminal of line is open, then only basic scheme logic will apply because if your one terminal of line is open, suppose the line is open at this end, then your fault uh, at this end, the relay cannot see the fault. And if the relay cannot see the fault, your zone one will not pick up. And if your zone one not pick up, so it cannot send the carrier. So in case your breaker is open, only basic scheme will work. Second thing, if there is a weak end in feed at one terminal, then only basic scheme logic will apply. This is also the same thing. If this is, uh, suppose this end is having weak end. So if this is weak end, so it might happen that no zones will pick up at this end because if this end is weak, so it cannot contribute any fault current and zones doesn't pick up. If zone doesn't pick up, it cannot send the carrier. So your scheme doesn't work. Only basic scheme will work in that condition also. And lastly, if signaling channel fails, then only basic scheme logic will apply. So next is permissive overreaching schemes. So now in this permissive overreaching schemes, your carrier is sent with zone 2 pickup. And, and when I say the carrier is sent with zone 2 pickup, that doesn't mean the carrier is not sent using zone 1. Because if you remember, if any fault is in zone 2, then it will definitely be in zone 1 also. Uh, if any fault is in zone 1, Sorry, if any fault is in zone 1, that it will definitely be in zone 2 also. And you can understand this by using a simple example. Suppose your total line impedance is 100 ohm and zone 1 setting is 80 and zone 2 setting is 120 ohm. In that case, if suppose your fault is at 50 ohm, so it will be in zone 1 and it will be in zone 2 also. So when your relay sees a fault is in zone 1, so it will definitely send a signal even if the send logic is with zone 2 pickup because your zone 2 will pick up. So uh, permissive overreaching schemes, if you see here, now we have internal fault and uh, then we will discuss about the external fault also and why we have to discuss two separate cases for permissive overreaching scheme is that because now zone 2 is being used for sending the carriers and uh, if you remember zone 2 is uh, up to 120 percent and our principal line is only up to 100 percent so if there is a fault in the 80 to 100 percent region then we have to isolate that fault instantaneously but if the fault is in 100 to 120 percent region then we don't have to isolate that fault instantaneously also but because in that case the fault is in uh, the adjacent line and the adjacent line protection must operate first and if that protection fails to operate then only our line protection should operate so uh, we have to discuss two conditions first is internal fault and second the external fault internal fault is basically the fault uh, from this 80 percent to 100 percent region and external fault is from 100 percent to the zone to boundary of 120 percent now in the first case suppose the fault is at this point now this fault is in the zone one from the right hand side bus and in, in the zone two from the left hand side bus so when this relay say the fault in zone two it will send a carrier this carrier is received here and the relay receives the carrier at the same time if you see here this relay uh, of the right hand side it sees the fault in zone 1. Once it sees the fault in zone 1 it will directly issue a trip command. It doesn't have to wait for this carrier signal over here. But in this uh, left hand side bus once uh, in the right hand side your zone 2 picks up it will send a carrier. This carrier is received here. Carrier received and zone 2 is pickup condition so it will issue a trip command. And up to this point, this is exactly the same like in the permissive underreaching schemes. Only difference is that now the carrier is sent using zone 2 pickup, but in permissive underreaching scheme, carrier was sent using zone 1. Now consider the external fault. External fault means the fault is now beyond our transmission line. In that case, our scheme must remain stable. It should not issue trip command. So let us see. Uh, the fault is now at this point this is external fault because this is not on our main principal line which is connected between these two buses so the left hand side relay it says the fault in zone 2 and it will send the carrier signal this carrier signal is received here but at this end this fault is not in the forward direction so it's zone 2 will not pick up so zone 2 doesn't pick up even if the carrier is received it will not issue a trip command so no tripping at right hand side bus further since zone 2 has not picked up it cannot send the carrier signal over here carrier is not received so it will not issue instantaneous tripping uh, the left hand side relay it will wait for zone 2 timer to elapse and only after that it will issue a trip command so our scheme is stable for both cases internal fault as well as external fault now in the last two cases of direct schemes or direct underreaching schemes and permissive underreaching transfer tripping schemes we have discussed the two limitations that when your CV is in the open condition those schemes cannot work properly 
also in case of weak and infit these schemes were not uh, working properly only basic schemes were working now in case of permissive overreaching schemes we can have additional logic and this logic is called cb eco logic what is basically the cb eco logic if you see here now suppose your cb is open uh, on this right hand side bus your cb is open if the cb is open this end cannot contribute the fault current if it cannot contribute the fault current your zones will not pick up over here if your zones cannot pick up it cannot send the carrier signal and if can it cannot send the carrier signal your tripping at this end will be delayed tripping but in case of permissive overreaching scheme there is an additional uh, logic which is called cb eco logic and what this cb eco logic means is simply once your carrier is sent from this end to this end and if your breaker is open this carrier will be echoed back to your local end and we will see how this is implemented suppose this fault is at this point now this fault is in the zone 2 from the left hand side bus but from the right hand side since breaker is open it cannot see the fault in any of its zone so now this relay sees the fault in zone 2 it sends a carrier signal at this end at this end zone 2 doesn't picks up so it cannot send the carrier signal but now if you see here an additional end gate is used if you see in the last uh, diagram uh, the carrier was sent directly when zone 2 picks up it directly sends the carrier signal zone 2 picks up and it directly sends the carrier signal now here uh, in the eco logic before sending the carrier signal if you see here one path is zone 2 picks up it will send the carrier signal but the second path is there is an end gate and in this end gate if cv is open now cv is open that means this is one now carrier is received from your local end this carrier is sent this carrier is received here and if this cv is open so carrier received plus cv open this is end gate so this will satisfied output one and it will be echoed back so carrier will be received here so now if you see the same carrier which was transmitted from this end it is echoed back with this cv open logic and you receive this carrier and your zone 2 plus carrier receive and it will issue a instantaneous tripping and time delay depends upon your carrier transmission time only so this cv eco logic basically how it works it will send the send logic is same zone 2 tripping logic is exactly the same receive plus zone 2 and now at open terminal there is an eco logic inbuilt eco logic and this is your cb open if there is cb open so carrier will be retransmit or carrier will be echoed back now second one is we can infeed eco this is also exactly the same type here now if you see here the complexity is further uh, aggravated now the complexity has further increased in this case if you see the last case you have already seen this path is for zone 2 uh, pick up this path is for cb open plus the carrier received from remote end now an additional end gate is introduced so if you remember in case of weekend in uh, weekend this end suppose the right hand side this is having weekend so if this end is weekend it cannot contribute the fault current and it might happen that no zones pick up at this end if your zones doesn't pick up so it cannot send a carrier signal but in case of permissive overreaching scheme if you use a weekend eco logic so now this end uh, sends the carrier signal it will see the faults in zone 2 it sends the carrier signal over here and now from this end zone 2 doesn't pick up so it cannot send the carrier through this path cb is in the closed condition if you see here cb is in closed condition so even if carrier is received cb is in the closed condition so cb eco logic will not work but now we have assumed or we have uh, used this setting as permissive overreaching scheme with weak and eco so now uh, how this internal relay algorithm work it sees that oh you have implemented this setting as weak end so now it sees that oh if there is an, uh, no zones at this end if suppose no zones picked up that is no zone 1 no zone 2 no zone 3 or no zone 4 picks up and carrier is received so it will revert back the carrier signal this can be implemented either through no pickup of any zone or no pickup of zone 2 no pickup of zone 1 no pickup of zone 4 in our case we have assumed that if suppose zone 4 has not picked up and carrier is received from remote end then the same carrier is echoed back and once this carrier is received here it will issue a trip command directly so this is your uh, weak and infit logic now if you see here uh, this end sees the fault in zone 2 it sends the carrier signal this carrier signal is received here zone 4 doesn't pick up because of weak end so carrier is revert uh, back by this eco logic carrier is now transmitted here received carrier received zone 2 already pick up it will issue a trip command but this doesn't uh, complete the scheme because even though 
because due to your weak and infield logic, the CB at the left hand side bus has tripped, but your CB at right hand side bus has not tripped till now. So how we can trip this uh, CB at right hand side? We can implement an additional logic, and now this completes the com uh, the complete POTT schemes, and this is the uh, highest level of complexity in the permissive overreaching schemes using weak and infield eco, weak and infield trip, and CP, uh, CB eco logic. Here uh, we have already explained up to this point. John Ford has not picked up and carry received. Now, how this end trip, the end which is having weekend, how this end trips, it sees that your carrier is received from remote end. No zone has picked up. Additionally, it sees that uh, if the over voltage is in reset condition, and definitely over voltage will generally be in reset condition if there is a fault on transmission line your over voltage cannot picked up so over voltage will be in reset condition zone cannot pick up due to infield uh, weak in infield so zone is not picked up over voltage is reset and it sees that carrier is received from remote end so it will issue its trip command you see here how it is implemented carrier is sent from this end zone 2 carrier received here so carrier is received over voltage has not picked up so this is one zone 4 has not picked up this is one so it will not issue a trip command so this is the Final schemes of permissive overreaching scheme using weekend infit eco, CB eco plus weekend infit trip. And this is the complete logic. Send logic is zone 2. Tripping logic is received plus zone 2 for this end or at this end also. Open terminal, it will echo back the carrier using CB open uh, status. Weekend infit eco, it will see that zone 4 uh, not picked up and carrier is received, so it will echo back. We can infit trip, zone 4 not pick up, over voltage reset and carrier received from remote end. This is the weekend infit tripping. Now, the advantage of permissive overreaching transfer tripping scheme, it provides better resistive coverage, especially on short lines, because now you are using zone 2 for carrier uh, send. So, it will have a higher resistive coverage and especially it is advantageous for short lines. Moreover, the short lines having more measuring elements, it will be more advantageous. Second, for cases where one line terminal is open, open breaker eco logic can be used. For cases of weak or zero infit at one line terminal, weak and infit logic can be used. Additionally, you may require a reverse looking zones. Then only you can complete the permissive overreaching transfer tripping schemes with CV eco plus weak and infit eco and weak and infit trip. And I have already explained how this complete logic works. So now uh, the limitations. Basically, this scheme is although very secure, but it is generally considered theoretically as less secure as compared to permissive underreaching schemes because your carrier signal is keyed for external faults. Additionally, signal ch uh, if the signal channel fails, then only basic scheme logic will apply. Now, this is the last topic and the, uh, I am covering this topic over here al uh, also because uh, we are trying to complete all the uh, topics related to uh, distance protection schemes, theoretical concepts so that we can directly move to our practical sessions from next uh, session onwards. Now this is the last uh, complexity, this is current reversal logic and this comes when you are using permissive overreaching transfer tripping schemes and you are having parallel lines. Now consider this case, you are having two transmission lines A1, B1 and A2, B2 connected between these two buses and if a, there is a fault on first transmission line, so definitely if there is a fault on first transmission line, so your transmission line A1, B1 will definitely trip. But consider the effect on second transmission line. When there is a fault on first transmission line, your relay at this end A2 of this transmission line A2, B2, it sees the fault in forward direction and, and it sees the fault in zone 2 and it will send the carrier signal to your B2 relay. At B2, this relay sees the fault in reverse direction and it cannot trip because your carrier, although carrier is received at B2 end, but it sees the fault in zone 4, so uh, this end will not trip. Now consider when your fault in transmission line A1, B1, both protection relay has operated, but uh, suppose B1 breaker has opened, but A1 breaker is not open till now. And this may be due to uh, n number of reasons. One of the possible reasons is that the time of operation of your uh, A1 uh, uh, circuit breaker at A1 terminal and circuit breaker at B1 terminals, your uh, circuit breaker may be of some different manufacturer and suppose the time of operation of A1 circuit breaker is 20 milliseconds and for B1 circuit breaker it is 30 milliseconds. It may also be due to suppose that at A1 and your uh, the relay operating time is suppose 2 to 3 cycles and the at B1 terminals your relay is very fast and it operates only in 1.5 to 2 cycles. So uh, there will be n number of regions. Now 
consider that due to this region any of these regions your relay at b1 has issued the trip command and your b1 circuit breaker opens so once the b1 circuit breaker opens now the fault current direction reverses so if you see here now the fault current direction because the fault current direction reverses now b2 c is the fault in zone 2 and a2 c is the fault in zone zone 4 uh, reverse zone now this is a re uh, race condition why this is a race condition earlier when your breaker was in closed condition a2 has already sent the carrier signal to b2 now when your uh, breaker opens now b2 is the fault in zone 2 now if once the carrier is already reset before zone 2 picks up then there will be no problem but suppose zone 2 picks up before the expiry of the earlier received carrier then your uh, b2 and will issue a trip command this which is undesirable second race around condition might be here earlier this a2 relay was in uh, if you see here earlier this a2 relay was in picked up in zone 2 condition and now b2 because of this current reversal it has sent the carrier signal and suppose a2 zone 4 has not picked up but it is still in zone 2 so because of this receive of carrier from b2 end it will issue a uh, inadvertent tripping inadvertent tripping so uh, this types of problem occurs on case of permissive overreaching transfer tripping schemes on parallel lines due to current reversal and to avoid these situations basically in every relay either uh, the ABB REL670 or Siemens 7SA5221 or Alstom GP442P444 uh, relay the, uh, there is an additional logic current reversal logic which is implemented and this logic in case of your ABB relay or REL670 it is called current reversal guard which is uh, set at 50 to 60 milliseconds and in case there is a current reversal detected by this relay A2 or B2 and in that 50 to 60 millisecond time delay then it will wait and it will not issue a trip command directly on this basis of carrier uh, signal received it will issue a trip command only after that 50 to 60 millisecond if again uh, if the carrier signal is persisting fault is persisting only then it will issue a trip command in case of REL 670 it is called current reversal guard in case of 7 sa 5221 it is called transient blocking in case of your um, P442 or P444 it is called T reversal guard so in every numerical relay these settings are available and the purpose for discussion of this uh, theoretical concept over here is only because when we discuss about uh, these concepts in the practical relay settings through numerical relay then you must be aware about these concepts so that the understanding becomes easy so we will keep up to this point only hopefully you have understood each and every concept up to this point now uh, in the next session onward we will uh, discuss the practical relay settings relay configuration input output cfc logic creations using dixie software in siemens 7sa5221 relay further uh, we will discuss about the same thing using s1 agile software in our, uh, mycom relay then we will move on to PCM software and we will discuss it about REL670. If time permits, we will again discuss about GE D60 relay also. Then uh, in the later sessions, we will discuss about fault analysis using SIGRA and using WaveWin software. Some of the theoretical concepts like SOTF, STUB, power swing, load encroachment, the challenges imposed by series compensated lines that we will discuss in separate sessions as and when required. Further, uh, from next session onwards, we are going to start directly the configuration and uh, relay settings in Siemens 7SA522 relay only. I hope everything is clear up to this point. So please keep watching and if you have not subscribed this channel till now and if you like the content then please subscribe to this channel and share the video you, with your friends also. Thank you.